I'm talking professionally. Where do you want to be professionally? And I help you understand that. And then we talk about where you want to be, where Z is, where your destination is. Here's where we're starting from and here's where we want to get to. And then we talk about what is it going to take to get there? What people do we need? What experience do we need? What assets do we need? What processes do we need? Now, most business advisors will sit there and they'll write up a business pro program for you, a business plan for you, and say, you're at step A, here's destination Z, here are all the things that we have agreed on that you need to do, now here you go. Big Vision takes it a step further. We jump on the bus. I jump on the bus and I ride shotgun with you. I'll go through the journey with you. I'll help you avoid the potholes, the dead ends, the detours. I'll help you understand where you need to take a left instead of maybe taking a right. Not by telling you, but by having the conversation with you. So the, what I bring to the table is not book smart. I bring street smart. I bring experience. So one of the things that I'm very proud of is that we built, I built with an amazing team of company people and third party vendors, and we'll talk about that, a company called Sarah Michaels. And for those of you who are a little bit older, you may know what Sarah Michaels was. It was a bath and body product line. And what we did was we brought the concept of Crabtree and Evelyn, which is the luxury boutique um, scent program that you could buy a lavender bar of soap for $7.50. If my wife came home with a lavender bar of soap for $7.50, I would look at her and say, seriously? Well, we took it to Walmart and to Kmart and to CVS. We took it to Stop and Shop and to Ahold and to Publix. We took it to um, all the different food mass and drug chains. And we've looked at where we wanted to bring it so that you can come in and buy that luxury with that same beautiful package and we took a loofah business. How many of you show of hands know what loofah is? Loofah is a bath sponge. We took a bath sponge and we brought it to a hundred million dollar business. So at that stage in my life, when you looked at me, when, when my soon to be boss said to me, Bob, I'd like you to run my company. And I said, Mark, I don't know how to run a business. And he said, Bob, we have six employees. We have $300,000 in sales. We sell, we have a 20,000 square foot warehouse. You can run this company. And I said, Mark, I'm not sure if I want Lufa to be my future. And he said to me, Bob, it's gonna be something bigger. I don't know what, but it's gonna be something bigger. If you gave us both a piece of paper and a pencil and said, define bigger, you know, maybe I would have said $15 million because I wouldn't want to insult him. And he, being the dreamer that he is, may have said $25 million. We never would have believed that you could take Lufa to a $100 million company. Lufa, a $100 million business that was bought by the Dial Soap Corporation for $185 million. In that moment back in 1986, don't take out your calculators and start figuring out how old I am, okay? In 1986, if you said to me, Bob, your company is going to be worth $100 million, and I say my company, folks, let's be clear, it was not my company. I was the chief operating officer with six people, and I was the chief operating officer with 400 people. I was second in command from the beginning to the end, but I was not a principal. Shame on me. But we'll go through that in another, for, it, it'll go, we'll have a drink later to talk about that. But here I'm saying to you, there's no big vision that can't be achieved. If you've got an idea in your mind and you think that it's something that you want to take to the next level, you can do this. If we can bring Lufa to a $100 million business, I'm pretty comfortable in saying to you, your idea will work. And oh, by the way, I don't have a college degree. My degree is in the School of Hard Knocks. I've learned on the job what you could not learn 
in Harvard Law School, uh, in Harvard Business School, or in any Ivy League college, business school, or um, education. So we're going to talk a little bit about bringing a business from concept to consumer. Your idea in your mind to bringing it to market. Now let's first talk about some of the things that we need to focus on. And we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, each of these things as time goes on. We're obviously not going to be able to look at the entire process. We'll skim over a few things, but these seven items are what I think are the lucky seven action items that you need to have in your mind when you're building a business. This is a business success formula that I have uh, subscribed to. We'll talk a little bit more about it, P4C3S2. The key to this is the S2. You're building success, but you're building sustainability. Success is a one hit wonder. Success is a song that people have heard, but they don't know who it is because they haven't done anything beyond that one song. Success is reaching the point that you feel that you've done it and you're happy with it. Sustainability is the ability to grow it, is to grow it whether it's in the same processes that you're working with, the same marketplaces that you're working with, or taking that to the next level. The next thing that we'll talk about is the idea of, um, Allison, uh, the next slide. Okay, you don't have to know everything about everything. And by that, I mean that so many entrepreneurs feel that this is something that you have to know in order for you to become a business owner. When I was running Sarah Michaels, I had no knowledge of how to set up a warehouse, how to set up a distribution center, how to set up a production center. And he, my boss came to me and said, here's a 350,000 square foot empty warehouse, 71 doctors, make it work. I had no idea, but I knew people in the trucking business. I knew people in the material handling business. I knew people in the, in the uh, production business. I knew people in shipping and receiving. And I brought them all together and explained to them my big vision and what I hope to see this particular building provide. Well, I have to tell you, in a matter of eight months, we had 400 people running what I felt was one of the most efficient operations that I have ever been a part of. And it wasn't because I knew what to do or because I had my big vision. It was because I had people who knew about the things that I didn't know. So when I needed somebody to come and help me with understanding, I didn't have to rely on my own knowledge and narrow down the opportunity to what I knew. It was all about reaching out to people who knew what was going on here. So let's talk about the concept that it's not what people it's not what you're selling it's what people believe they are buying sometimes that's not even your business people are buying you people are buying the person that you are present that is being presented to them can i ask anybody have any idea what that means people aren't buying your business they're buying you any thoughts Allison, maybe if you could stop the share and any thoughts? I can't. Coach Margaret, what do you think? From my perspective, it's uh, it goes back to the the no like and trust. Regardless of what my product is or my service or the results, if they don't know me, they don't feel connected. If they don't like me, like me you know they don't feel a connection there and they don't trust me it won't matter how great the product is unless i'm selling something that's a commodity right if i'm selling salt and sugar and widgets uh you just go buy those it doesn't matter but if you're buying something where a personal connection is required to get a results then it goes back to to the no like and trust factor that's great and once again i'm not going to get into the emotional intelligent part of it but bottom line is if you don't like yourself you can't expect others to like you. 
if you don't have the faith in your product, if you don't have the, the faith in your service, if you don't have the faith in your ability to deliver what it is that you say you're going to deliver, they're not going to trust you, whether they know you or like you. So to, to Margaret's point, they have to know you, they have to like you, and they have to trust you all in the same. So let's talk about what it is that is your business. Because when you say, I have an idea, you should have an idea in your mind about what it is that you want to present. Is it a service? Is it a product? Is it an organization? Is it a structural? Is it nonprofit? Is it for profit? Is it consulting? Is it advocacy? Is it medical? Is it legal? What is it that you feel that you're going to bring to the world and make it a better place? So once you get that idea in your mind, now we have to talk about some of the steps that it's going to take to get you there. And before we go on, I want to make sure that we all understand that even though I may be referring to a manufacturing or a, a product, a consumer product, you can take out that phrase or that product and insert your business. I am a business advisor. I am a lawyer. I am an optometrist. I have a service. I work in a cleaning service. I do construction. I do consulting. I run a nonprofit organization. So please don't think that I'm focusing specifically on how to run a product consumer, a consumer product business, or a manufacturing facility, or a warehousing and distribution facility. This goes along with pretty much any business that you want to work, just fill in the blanks with what you think is, um, is relevant to the business that you're talking about. So obviously, we're not going to be able to go through everything. As I said before, we'll stop at a few different points. We'll talk about specifically a few different items, and then we'll open it up to a little bit of questions. But as Allison said, if you've got something that you'd like to add, please just raise your hand. I'm hoping I'll be able to see you and um, we can talk about whatever it is that you have that's relevant, obviously, to the conversation. If you'd like to talk about my buddy Tom Brady or the Bruins or the Celtics or the Patriots, you know, I'm OK with that as well. But for right now, we'll stick to we'll stick to uh, the business at hand. That's great, Bob. Hey, Bob, it looks like Josh has his hand up. So, Josh, do you want to jump oh. in? Got a question? <clears throat> About Tom sorry, Brady. Sorry, that, that was from before. <laughs> I forgot to talk okay, got it. No worries. So feel free to jump in if you have questions, though, guys. Okay, we'll talk yes. about Tom Brady later. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. So let's start with the corporate part of it. Now, you say to yourself, corporate, I'm a one-man uh, one gang here. I don't have corporate. This isn't about me. Well, you do. You have to figure out your business structure. Are you an LLC? Are you a C Corp? What are the things that you have to work on? Are there areas that you want to trademark? Are there registration marks that you want to um, legally own? What type of packaging and verbiage and descriptions and claims? Nowadays, you have to be very careful about what you claim. Uh, nomenclatures are incredibly important, especially on consumer products. If you are going to claim to heal the world of cancer, you better be able to heal the world of cancer. It's no more false claims. You have to make sure that you can back up the things that you talk about. And we'll talk about that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Then we have to talk about what is our mission. Any of you know Simon uh, Sinek? That name mean anything to anybody? Simon Sinek's whole thing is why. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is it from your heart that makes you want to be that person, makes you want to be in that business? Some of us don't own our own businesses, but we play a large role in the company that we own, that we, we work for. Well, why are you doing what you're doing? What is it in your heart? Is it just the paycheck? Is it that you feel that you're doing a better good for humanity? Is it that you feel you're offering a product to people that's going to make their lives better? Or is it just a job that you go to and you know what, if a better job comes up with a different product or a different widget, I'm there. That's up to you. That's something that we can't talk about. That's more psychiatric than it is business. 
but you have to understand what your why is, what your mission is. Then we have to get into a business plan. Now, let's talk about business plan for a minute. So while strategic planning exercises are always going to leave room for improvement, they have to have a place to start. You have to have insight. You have to have resources. You have to have launch strategies to understand what it's going to take to give you the competitive edge, to give you the reason why people are going to want whatever it is that you're offering that nobody else can offer them. So we're always going to look at a business plan. You know, a, a, a mentor of mine once said to me, the business plan becomes obsolete the minute you finish it. Because now you're starting to see things in different ways. You're starting to see options. You're starting to see opportunities that you may not have seen prior to you doing the due diligence beyond the concept. Now you're starting to come out here as opposed to staying in here. So the business plan becomes obsolete the minute you finish it. So one other thing that I want to say, and Allison, this is the next slide is to build a big vision, then determine the activities that you're gonna need to make it happen. And not only the activities that you're gonna need to make it happen, but the appropriate stages that you're gonna have to bring them into the plan. You're gonna build up without having to tear down or rearrange and move forward with the plan. So let me give you a little bit of personal my wife and I built a house in Mansfield, Massachusetts. We have a very large frontage, a very large grassy area. It's, it's very nice. And we hired a, an architectural, a, a, um, a grounds care architect, landscaping architect, to come in and design the full design of what that frontage would look like. And he had an island here with a tree and an island here with a tree and a walkway going up the middle and all these different things that would take up our frontage. And then we asked him to give us an, an idea, an estimate of what each of those pieces would cost. So we then came and looked at our budget and we said, okay, we can afford to do this and we can afford to do that. So we did it. Now, business was good, a little bit of extra money came in, we wanted to add on a little bit. So we took out that drawing and we said, okay, now we'd like to do this. And ultimately, you hope to get to that big vision. But we didn't have to tear down something because something is going over that or around that or between that. We had that big vision, we had that bigger plan so that we understood what we needed in the big picture. Same with building a warehouse. I told you about 150,000 square foot warehouse. I called in people. We talked about racking. We talked about production lines. We talked about equipment. We talked about office supplies, office uh, areas. We talked about shipping and, and uh, receiving areas. And I went back to my boss with the blueprint and I said, Mark, here's what I have. What budget do I have to work with it? I went back to my, my team and I said, okay, guys, we have X amount of dollars to work with it. In your minds, what do we need to do with that money? How do we put that money to the best use? So now the, move, the company is moving. We've gone from $5 million to $15 million. We're hiring more people. We're bringing in more production. We're shipping out more product. I went back and said, Mark, I need to expand. Well, what do you need to do? I said, we need to add this. We need to add this. And we need to add that. Okay. And what will that cost? Well, that's going to cost X amount of dollars. Do it. We didn't have to tear down any racking. We didn't have to add, uh, chase away any of the areas that we've already put together. We didn't have to restructure any of the processes because everything was already in place. And ultimately, as the company grew to 40, $50 million, we had the full warehouse and in full production. 
and it was seamless. And there weren't people who had to move out of the way because, hey, guys, we have to take down this production area because we're building up the new production area. No, the production area was done. Did we add in different equipment? Sure we did. As we grew, we added in different equipment. So I want you to think about what is necessary to build your business. If you're, a, if you're an advisor, do you need an office? Do you need equipment? Do you need a copy machine? Do you need computers? Do you need inventory of any level? What are the things that you need? Now, you may look and say, well, you know, I would really like to have four desktops because I think that's the most efficient way for us to do our teamwork in inter-office. But you know what? At this point in time, I can't afford to set up four desktops. So maybe you set up two desktops and you give two laptops and you work within your budget, but you always work within that bigger plan. You always work within your big vision. And when you set up that big vision, it has to be pie in the sky. There's no budget. There's no limit. There's no, this is what it's going to take to get me to success. And the only way that I can get there is to take it step by step by step. And I don't want to tear down any walls. I don't want to tear down any racking. I don't want to make people have to leave and as we reconstruct their areas. I want this to be a seamless process. And it works. So I'd like you to think about what does that mean to you? How does that apply to your business? Any comments, any thoughts? Yeah. Bob, actually, Ehab's got his hand up. Ehab, jump on in. Ehab. Hey, Bob, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. So question on the business plan. Would you recommend doing parts of it or doing the whole thing? Like I've been conflicted about it myself with my businesses because I just want to get up and running. I have a plan. I have an idea of the necessities of filling in, but are there maybe specific areas within a business plan that I should have thought about? Maybe a SWOT analysis or projections? I love the question you have. The business plan to me is the most fun of the whole process because it gives you the chance to dream. It gives you the chance to see your big vision. And a business plan is due diligence. A business plan, if you're looking for uh, investment capital, a business plan is going to tell your investors, I know my company. I know my marketplace. I know my customer. It's going to tell your investors, I've done the due diligence to understand. Now, business plans are projections. And by definition, projections are educated guesses. Mm -hmm. You're not saying that we're going to open up five locations in the first six months just to say we're going to open up five locations in the first six months. You're going to figure out which locations, why you feel you're comfortable saying that we can get those five, why you're excited about the fact that we can do this in six months. But you know what? It may be five totally different locations because as you get into the game, you realize that, you know, these are more prone to our, to our opportunity. These are more open to um new uh, new ideas so we're gonna zig and zag a little bit so ehab i would say to you that if you're gonna work on a business plan find somebody who can ask you the questions who can prompt you who can ask you ehab what is it going to take to make your business the most successful we'll talk a little bit more about what i do i don't give you answers i don't know your business as a business advisor, I'm not here to tell you how to run your business. I'm here to talk to you about what your big vision is, what is it going to take to get there, and then talk about the areas that need to be worked on to make it all happen. So when we're working on your business plan, Ehab, I would start out by saying, Ehab, what is it that you feel is the key to success? Is it the right people? Is it the right advertising? Is it the right processes? Is it the right machinery? 
Is it the right inventory level? What is it relative to what you want to accomplish that you're going to have to focus on? And we'll spend the brunt of our time talking about anything around that. If you said to me, I have five products that I want to bring to light, we would talk about supply chain. We would talk about inventory levels. We would talk about, if you're talking about you want to run a consulting firm, we would talk about marketing. We would talk about number of clients. We would talk about hours that you want to spend. So it's hard to say that there are specific areas of the business plan. At the end of the day, it all comes out to how much money are you generating and how much expenses are you paying out? So that's the end of the day. You have to come up with that number. And hopefully when you finish that process, you'll have more money coming in than you will have going out. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> okay, hopefully. But this will give us a chance to look at it and say, okay, why isn't that number higher? Are we hiring too many people? You know, we'll talk about the, the, um, what it's going to take to bring the staff in. As an entrepreneur, you talk about wearing multiple hats. So you may hire a customer service person who's great with people. But to start, that customer service person may be your order processor, may be our accounts payable, our receivable person, may be your, your inventory control person. And then as the company grows and you start to see the need to hire more specialties, you'll bring those people in. The beauty of it is, is that you've done a little bit of cross training. So you'll never get yourself in a position where if your accounts payable person leaves, you are, you are in a position where you have nobody to pick up. So there's a lot of things that go into it, Ehab. I would love to have that conversation with you clearer one-on-one. -on -one because again, in order for me to answer that, I'd really like to know what your big vision is. You and I touched on it a little bit, but you have a huge vision, which came as a surprise to me. You have a huge vision. You have a, a worldwide vision. And that isn't just a section in a business plan. Yes. And Process. Bob, I'd love to jump yes, in. I love, love this conversation. Jump on in. Yep, go ahead. Jump on in. Yep, okay. go ahead. Hi, um, Bob. My name is Ellen Rubin. I had a, a uh, brick and mortar knit real vision for it was a nonprofit. Um, I could found that the two would work hand in hand. So I just redid my business plan, but I tried to integrate the two of them together because one won't be successful with the other. And really it was the nonprofit, which motivated me to open up the knitting store for the therapeutic benefits of knitting and crochet. So I would like some advice as to how to write a business plan that might have a, a, a component that the, the two of them work together and that they're in a, in a, in a I love that question. I had the fortunate opportunity to be the chief executive officer of one of the largest synagogues, Jewish synagogues in Massachusetts. And it was a very wealthy congregation and they had an incredible endowment. And it absolutely blew me away when I realized that these people had no idea about business. When they hired me, I thought I was being hired as an executive director. So when I go into the interview, I'm telling them about what a great Jew I am and how much I'm into the Jewish process and how I've been president of my temple and how my family is so engaged in the, in the religion. And they said to me, Bob, 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 we're not interested in you being a good Jew. We know you're a good Jew. We want your business mind. So very quickly, because I, I, I do want to go through a lot of different things, but I hope this will answer your question. We had a rabbi whose vision was that he wanted to reach as many people as he could. So what he would do, we had like 400 kids in our Hebrew school. So he decided that on Saturday mornings, when it was Shabbat, Sabbath, and we would get the, the, supposedly, you would get the biggest crowd of the week that you would, that would come. He said, we're going to have Hebrew school. Now, Hebrew school ended at 1130. And coincidentally, 
his sermon came up at 1130. So he figured all the parents that are going to come in to pick up their kids are going to come in and listen to his sermon. Now, take it a step further, and he said, we're going to provide them a brunch after every service. That brunch, you could not buy that brunch in Pancake House or any of your favorite diners for less than $30. It had eggs and, and it had no bacon. It had eggs and it had uh, all the things that you would want, French toast, it had a, 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 even, even macaroni and cheese. Everything you could possibly want. It, it outshined most bar bat mitzvahs. If you've ever gone to a bar bat mitzvah and they have the dinner afterwards and you say, wow, this is very nice. This was better than most of those. It cost us $2,500 a week. So now he's got 500 people in his congregation listening to him give his service, his sermon. And he would brag about that. We get 500 people. And I would look at him and I would say, Rabbi, we get 500 people for breakfast. So here's the conversation. Hey, hon, we have to take the kids out for breakfast. Where do you want to go? Well, we can go to Pancake House. It'll cost us 50 bucks. We can go to the diner. It'll cost us, uh, I don't know, $50, $60. Or we can eat at, at, at the temple and eat a better meal for nothing. I know how I'm voting. So to answer your question, and I'm sorry, your name, I, I don't want to call you love because then my wife, who is a human resource. <laughs> my, name is, my name is Ellen Rubin. And Hi, the Ellen store, Rubin. The store is love to knit and more. And I can really relate to the story that you're telling me. And that's for another day. Thank you. It's um, for another day. But I'm so pleased that you can, you can not only understand the difference, but that you realize that there is a huge correlation between running a business and running a nonprofit. If you're running a nonprofit and you don't have bills to pay, I want your business model. You're running a nonprofit that is a business. You have to turn the lights on. You have to run the water. You have to pay the staff. You have to do all those things. So of course you need a business model. Of course you need to have understanding of what you're looking for. So I would be more than happy to talk to you about that uh, offline or we can, uh, we can chat and I can give you some of my thoughts on that as well from experience. Thank you. I very much would appreciate that. Thank you. I hope that answers your question a little bit. Thank you. So now let's get back to what is the brand? What is, who are you selling to? What market are you selling to? What is the profile of an ideal consumer? What is the profile of an ideal client? What is the profile of an ideal retail partner? If you are selling to the retail segment, what is the marketplace that you want to focus on? Focus on what differentiates your company, your services, your product, your, your focus from your competition. Why buy you? Why buy your product? Why buy your services? My differentiator is that I don't just hand you the keys and tell you I wish you a safe travel. I jump on the bus and I'm sitting beside you shotgun to go through that journey of bringing you from where you are today to where your big vision is gonna be. Most business advisors, as I mentioned earlier, are looking at, here's what we talked about, here's what I recommend, have a nice day. I worked with a financial group and they walked in and they looked at your finances and they, they did deep dives into your uh, your processes, and they audited your books. And then they come back with a bunch of different operational things that you need to implement into your program. And then they walk away. And you look at this and say, great ideas, great ideas, great ideas. I have no idea what to do with this now. Where do I go with it? We bring you to that next step. How many of you have ever gone to a webinar are to a seminar when the days were that you could actually go and see people live and in person. 
and they hand you this big booklet, this big folder, and they take you through all the stuff that's in the folder. You've done 10 workshops with them. And every time they talk to you, you say, oh my God, I have to do this. This is exactly what this company needs. We have to do this. This has been so helpful to us. Then the seminars end, you go back to work, you take the workbook, you put it on your desk and lightens. So six months later, you say, boy, I need more space on my desk here. I'm running out of space. So you've got this big folder on your desk that has now accumulated an inch of dust. And you say, you know what? I'm gonna dust off the, the workbook. I'm gonna put it on the bookshelf. You knew when you were listening to them and you were being presented the program, this is what I have to do. But yet when it came time to actually implementing it, it wasn't important enough. Stuff happened. So that's the differentiator in me. So maybe one or two of you could share, what is the differentiator in you and the service, the product, the, the, uh, the business that you're bringing? Why would your competitors look and say, wow, I wish I thought of that? Any thoughts? This is, this is Don Yada. I would Don say Yada. finding, hey, I would say finding the gap in the marketplace really doing your market research to find out what it is that people are um, missing and what they're asking for. So for example, I have an online boutique called Lippers Avenue and it is a saturated market. However, I look to see what was my competitors doing and what I didn't see them do is bring the experience to the customer in a unique way. So one of the things that I'm having is gift with purchase. Another thing that I'm having is how can I bring that experience? So it's like little things when you open up my gift box, it'll be a rose. That's something that my competitors aren't doing. So I want it to be as unique as possible and yet create an experience from online to the customer and really, you know, it's catered to women. So how can I spoil women? I know what women like, so for the most part. So that's, that's what beautiful. I'm doing. That's beautiful, that, that's brilliant, absolutely. You know, a, a, a personal story. Um, I have a very close group of friends and we all have kids and we'll all go out for uh, a dinner to a nice restaurant and we'll be sitting around in the table and the server will come up to us and I'll start joking with the server and I'll say, you know, uh, we'll joke back and forth and I'll be able to tell whether or not the server hears what I'm saying and jokes around with it. So now at the end of the night and the server goes back and they go to their significant other and say, uh, you know, how was your day, hon? Well, I got to tell you something. There was this one guy that gave me a lot of shit and I really enjoyed it. And that was the one thing that I got out of the day. He met so many people. She met so many people during the course of that, that relationship. But yet that was the one thing that they remembered. That was the differentiator. So, Think about that when you're thinking about in terms of your own business. Danyana, thank you for sharing that. That's totally okay. on point. Thank so you. now we talk about the product line. You know, what is it? What is your brand? What will people see when they see your brand? We had a loofah that cost five cents. We put it in a blue bag. We called it Kazi. We sold it for a dollar to CVS and CVS sold it for a dollar fifty. We took that same piece of five cent loofah, we put it in a purple bag. We called it La Lorraine. We sold it for $3 to Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's sold it for $6. Do you know how many people would say to me, I would never buy that in, in uh, CVS. I would only buy it in Bloomingdale's. I would never trust my body to a product that buy, I pay $1.50 for in CVS, lady. I don't care what you do. It's the same nickel piece that's in the bag. It's perception. It's what's in people's minds. So what do they see when they see your product? What do they see when they see your logo? What do they see when they see your themes, your concepts, your trademarks, your icons? What do they see when they hear your advertising? What do they see 
when the person who's representing you at their desk is representing you? Are they professional? Are they clean cut? Are they prepared? What is your brand? What is the packaging? What is the layout of it? What does the photography look, out, look like? The art direction taken care of? The catalog sheets, the sales collateral that you use? These are the things that present you, your brand. People buy with their eyes. If you're gonna write anything down, write that down. People buy with their eyes. People don't buy what they can't see. They buy what they see. So know that if you're giving, you walk into your local drugstore and you wanna buy toothpaste, you wanna buy shampoo, better. You wanna buy shampoo. There's a 40 foot section of shampoo. What makes you buy that brand that you purchase? Maybe it's because you've used it and you're comfortable with it and you you know it's priced right. Maybe it's because you saw a good commercial. Maybe it's because you, you, um, you feel that the packaging attracted you. There was no such thing as body wash. If people ask me what my claim to fame is, there was no such thing as body wash until Sarah Michaels brought out body wash. When we introduced the bath category, to food, mass, and drug, they said, what's bath? We have cosmetics and we have health and beauty aids. So we had to build them a bath department. Now there's 40 feet of bath. There's 40 feet of that body wash. What makes you go to that specific product? What are they gonna come to that's gonna draw them to your specific product? And again, I don't care if it's a product on a shelf, or if it's a commercial on television, or if it's a advertisement in the newspaper, or if it's word of mouth. What is it that's gonna make them want you? And then we talk about how we're gonna sell it, sell it. And we can talk about that, I can talk about that for days. Uh, you know, the marketing piece of it, the promotional strategy, the launch strategy. Honestly, if we're gonna talk about marketing, I'm gonna tell you to see Allison because she's the marketing guru. So she's going to help you with that. But let's talk about the sales strategy and building a story. What does building a story mean? It means that you have to have a story to tell the person who you're going to sell to. So, so many of my people come to me and say, I want to sell to Walmart. And forget about the what is it going to take to get it into Walmart, the money, the guaranteed sales, the return policy and all of that, forget about that. Walmart is not a pioneer. They're not gonna take a new brand and say, let's see how it goes. They wanna hear your success story. They wanna hear your testimonials. They wanna hear your sell through. They wanna hear your delivery data. They wanna understand what clients you've helped to succeed. They wanna know what the sell through ratio is. If Michael Jordan tells you to buy a pair of sneakers. Are you buying a pair of sneakers? Because Michael Jordan tells you to. It may be, yes, I am, until you get to the store and realize they're $185. Now I don't care who tells me to buy the sneakers. I'm not paying $185 for sneakers. If Matthew McGonaghy tells you to buy a Lincoln, uh, a Lincoln Navigator, are you going to say, all right, all right, all right, you're going to listen to the people who have bought those products. You're going to listen to the people who are happy with those products. Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, they have opened up a whole new way of marketing. And again, Allison can tell you more about testimonials, people that you know, people that you like, people that you trust, who say to you, I love my Lincoln Navigator. Because, or you know what? I didn't like the Navigator. I liked the Navigator until I bought the Cadillac, until I bought the Toyota, until I bought the Kia. And I realized blah, blah, blah. They give you the data that you are gonna have in your mind when you make the decision to purchase that product. You have to build a story. You can't just say, I'm the one you have to buy. Here's the purchase order, write me a check. You have to build a story 
in your customer's mind as to what it is that it's the, what is going to be the reason for them wanting to buy your product and being able to be comfortable that you're going to supply them. So now we talk about how do we operate. And the first thing that I'm going to say to you is that you really need to find a group of people, a supply chain. You really need to find people who are committed to you, who are strong in what they do. They have the flexibility, they have the capacity. And I don't care if it's uh, if it's uh, production capacity or if it is the capacity to be able to answer the phone when you call. Okay, what phone system are you going to use? What computer system are you going to use? What consumer relation management system are you going to use? What inventory control system are you going to use? That's all supply chain people. It's not just who makes the bottle or who makes the cap or who makes the, but you have to know that they're committed to you. You have to have strategic initiatives to make sure that you're putting your capital into the hands of people that are going to turn it around and are going to provide you inventory that's going to make you a hero to your, to your uh, customers, to your clients, to your retailers. Because we'll talk a little bit in a couple of minutes about produce and provide what you promise. You can have the best story in the world. You can have the best product in the world. You can have the best packaging in the world. If you can't produce and provide what you promise, your reputation is gone. And trust me, I don't care what the industry is. When you get to the point where people don't trust you to deliver, you're dead. He never answers my phone. She never responds to my emails. I ask for information that I need that is, is really urgent and I hear back three days later. They tell me it's gonna arrive at my door on Tuesday, I don't see it for two weeks. How many times do you think you can get away with doing that and then still have them come back to you and say, what's the difference? Coach Mindy just said, that's how I stand out. Bravo, that's your brand. We lived in Florida. We were looking for a plumber. There was an ad in the newspaper, in, in the yellow pages, and all it said on it was, I will show up. Didn't say I'm a good plumber, I give good prices, didn't say anything. All it said was, I will show up. For those of you who have lived in Florida or have similar situations in your area, that was gold. There were so many plumbers that we called and they'd say, yeah, we can do it. Great, we're gonna be there. And yeah, we've got great pricing and I've got trucks and I've got people and I've got all this stuff and they don't show up. What good is all that? What good is their, is their brand loyalty? So just to go back, if we could, because we're, we're reaching that magic bewitching hour, let's talk once again about the lucky seven items, the business formula, putting the right people in the right places, having those people set up the plan that it's going to take to make your business successful, implementing the processes that it's going to that's going to be required to put that plan into action that will deliver you profits but now you have to communicate you have to collaborate and most importantly the biggest c of them all you have to be consistent you have to be consistent if you tell your organization we're big into collaboration and communication and then a week later, you send out an, an order of all the things that you're gonna do now and nobody has any idea where this all came from. What is your word gonna mean to them? Remember, you don't need to know, oh, and then once you have that consistency, if you've got the right people doing the right plan, putting in the right process, making profits, you're talking to each other, you're collaborating with each other, every voice is heard, and now you're being consistent that's going to bring you success. And once again, the most important S, sustainability, how we can grow. Remember, you don't have to know everything about everything. As long as you know people who know what you don't know, that's the key. 
as long as you know people who can help you get through, and they're going to come to you for your expertise. That's what makes the world go wrong. Focus on your differentiator. What makes you different than everyone else? Is it you? Is it your product? Is it your service? Is it your business? Is it what you offer? Is it that you show up? That plumber felt that his differentiator was, I show up. That's all you need to know. Build up without having to tear down or rearrange. Move the forward, the plan forward. Think about your understanding to what it's all about, what it's going to take to get there, and not have to, uh, not have to move around what's already in place. Develop a strong, proven, committed, flexible uh, supply chain and vendor backups. I don't care if it's the company that you buy your toilet paper from. If they're not delivering toilet paper and you've got 400 people in your organization and there's no toilet paper in the bathroom, I'm pretty sure your company is going to be disrupted. Develop, uh, build a story. Talk about who you are, what you are, what it's all about. And then produce and provide what you promise. The biggest three P's of business. If you don't tell P, if you tell people, this is what I do, this is what you're going to get, and you don't deliver, don't go back to them, folks, because they're going to laugh at you. I'm really looking forward to being a mentor for this cohort. This, this is, if you can't tell, this is my passion. I love helping people achieve their big vision. One of the things that I found, I just finished the breakthrough part of Boston uh, Breakthrough Accelerator, uh, Breakthrough Academy. And one of the questions was, what is your big vision? And the trainer said, well, Bob, this should be easy for you because your company's name is your big vision. And I had no idea. I'm so set on helping my, my, um, my friends and my clients and my family all achieve their big vision that I didn't know what my big vision was. Well, now I do. And I want to be there beside you, helping you ride through and getting on the, that bus with you, making sure that people are in the right seats. They're all going in the right direction. And here's where we're going to get you to where you are. If there's more on this topic, folks, that you'd like to talk about, you'd like to dive deeper in, um, then please let us know and we'll schedule another webinar. I would love to do that. Uh, in the meantime, I really want to thank Boston Breakthrough Academy and Allison and Breakthrough Accelerator. Uh, I'm here to support you in identifying your big vision intellectually, emotionally, socially, professionally, financially. And we don't just give you the plan. We ride on the bus. And once again, my name is Bob Krensman, Your Big Vision. Thank you all for giving us your time and energy. And I look forward to getting to know each other throughout the process. Because remember, your vision is our mission. And just in closing, I'd like to wish my wife a very happy birthday tomorrow. So all us uh, breakthrough guys, let's give her a little love. Uh, happy birthday tomorrow. I'd also like to wish all the mothers in the room. Some of you I have called a mother, but there's usually a word after that. I'm talking about the female mothers that are in the room. Uh, I would like to wish you all a happy, um, a happy Mother's Day. And then I really would like to wish our host, uh, hostess, Allison, uh, CEO of Breakthrough Accelerator, a uh, sincere thank you for letting me give you the side of Bob that you may not have ever seen, the, the business thank side. You, Bob. That was amazing. I, I was like, glued to the screen the whole time. This is incredible. That was really powerful. And I see a couple of people with their hands up. So I want to jump in. But before we go, make sure you check those links in the chat uh, and share your links as well. Share links to your LinkedIn or your website if you'd like to share with the, with the group here and, and connect. But Breakthrough Accelerator, this is what we're all about. We're all about putting the right people together to accelerate your success and break through all that stuff that's in your way. And I love that we talked about business plans because usually that's where a lot of times we get stuck. Like what goes in it? What do I do? Well, that's what we do at the accelerator. We help you build that business plan so that you can accelerate results. And let me tell you about the results in our first class. Our class, uh, our students generated an average of almost $1 million in value per business. So if you're ready to generate some value for your business, sign up for the accelerator. So 
Check the link in the chat. And Evan, I see your hand up. Jump on in. Well, I, I just wanted to say, listening to Bob's presentation, which I thought was great, if there's one thing to take from his presentation is you're crazy to start a business on your own. That smart and wise people seek out and get advice and get support. And having been a mentor in the last cohort, um, I can tell you it was so inspiring to see so many businesses reach out to so many different mentors and each other, because everyone, in, everyone who's starting a business has expertise and that teamwork, uh, that's how you get acceleration. And I uh, just want to full heartedly encourage people, if, you, if you're really serious about starting a business, an accelerator is like the way to, the way to go. And I don't know most of you, but I've started over 20 different businesses. And I can tell you, doing it this way, I wish I had done it this way so many times. So, and great job, Bob. Thank you, Evan. Right on. Thanks, Evan. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. And I hope, uh, please feel free to schedule a call with me. Just click that link for the Breakthrough Accelerator. Schedule a quick call with me. I'd love to learn about your business and see what we can do to help you get generate that success and revenue because everything is possible and we've already graduated our first class. So we are on the rocket ship moving forward. So jump on. We're ready to accelerate your business. So hey, thank Allison, you guys all so much for joining us. Okay, can I stay on a little bit? And if anybody yeah. has any questions. Yeah, sure. If you guys want to stay on and go uh, Go for questions. Feel free to jump in. We'll it's keep Friday. The line open. I love it. It's Friday. So, <laughs> Go ahead, jump on so, in. Bob, I have a question. How does yep. your program? How does your program specifically work? Like, is that appropriate to ask you those details here or privately? No, my program works such that I'll talk to you about what your big vision is, and we'll discuss what it's going to take and how much of it that you need assistance with, how much of it that you need support with. So I don't, I can work with you on a program. I can work with you on a project basis. I can work with you on an hourly basis. And honestly, my rates vary based on the commitment from the client. If I have a client that says to me, Bob, I need you for five hours, then my pay, my, my, um, my fee will be a little bit different than a client that says to me, Bob, I'd like you to, I'd like to engage you for a year. I'd like you to help me through this process. I'd like you to work with me in getting through this specific area and then we'll take it from there. So, you know, it's all about what you're looking for, what your big vision is. You don't have to hire a CEO. If you hired a CEO, and, and, and I don't like talking about myself, but if you hired a CEO with my resume, you're gonna pay $150,000 for them. With me, you're gonna use me for what you need and when you need them, when you need me. And, and also my network. You say to me, you know, Bob, I'm having issues with marketing. I say to you, let me connect you with Allison Cheney. <laughs> you say to me, Bob, I, can, I, I, re, I really need financial information. I'm not a finance guy. I'm going to say to you, I've got a CFO that I really think, and it's not that you're using them because I'm telling you, it's because you're using them because I'm telling you that I have proven success with them. It's not they're my friend and I know them and this is what's going to be good for you. It's I can give you the story, the background behind it. I had a client that was a soap manufacturer that said to me, we want to bring out a full line of products. And he introduced me to his Harvard MBA vice president of new product development. And he said to me, Bob, what do I need you for? There are thousands of uh, bottle manufacturers and thousands of label manufacturers and thousands of box manufacturers. And my answer to him was, you need me because there are thousands of bottle manufacturers and thousands of label manufacturers and thousands of tube manufacturers. And if you wanna go through the process, of finding out the better ones, if you wanna pay the prices, if you wanna get the aggravation, if you wanna deal with the frustration, I have no doubt that you can do it in four or five years. He hired me seven months later and Tom Bungie, you see his name, will attest seven months later, we were sitting in front of CVS, Walmart, Kmart, Target because of my network and people like Tom and other people on this website, on this uh, webinar. So, you know, again, uh, 
Dunyana, I hope I answered your question. It's what you need when you need it. And then we can talk about where it goes from there. Thank you, you answered it thoroughly. Thank you. All right, any other questions for Bob? Any other questions? Or me, I'll answer questions too. Good. Awesome <laughs> job, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Allison and Gosh, Bob. I have two, no, I can't say it because I would, I want to say it, guys, and you know what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> okay, we can read your mind, Bob. It's all good. <laughs> You've got friends in the room. Uh, but I do thank you all for your support. It means so much to me. And, uh, Absolutely. That was, that was yeah. awesome. I had a blast. Well, yeah. So I do have one last question. Sure. So if you, let's say I have Allison on here, and you say, okay, Allison will be the person I'm going to link you with is at this point, when you start to refer me to different people, is this still within your package or is it now I'm entering into other people's package deals? I am your business advisor. I am here to help you in whatever way I can. If you would like me to come to the table when you're talking to Allison, I'm there for you. If you would like me to validate your marketing program, I'm there for you. If you would like me to give you some of my thoughts to be a sounding board, I'm there for you. If you need somebody to give you that peace of mind, or even more importantly, and for those of you who have gotten to know me a little bit more, you'll see that, okay, that makes sense. If you need me to challenge you, if you need me to really make it difficult for you, and so that when you're done with that conversation, you can comfortably, confidently, and consistently say, I made the right decision. I'm there for you. So I'm bringing you people who I have total faith and confidence. If I said to you, you work with Allison Cheney, I can say to you, Danyada, I'm there if you need me, but I don't need to be there. But if you say to me, Bob, I'd really like you to hear, I'd really like you to give your input, I'd really like your thoughts, I'm there for you. Does that make sense? It does. Um, just a little bit more clarification. Um, I have been in a program before where, let's say, for example, you were the host. And Allison, I'm going to use you again. Allison was there as my coach. But if I needed something um, that you couldn't provide, Allison now charged for her services. So I want to get right. clarity. That, okay, so that is how it is. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. Let me speak Absolutely into that right. because I hear what I hear where you're going with this, Daniata, and this is a this is exactly what the accelerator exists for. Because if you have a business, yeah, and this is what I mean. Every time I start a business, this is what happens. I'm like, oh, I need Bob for this, and I need someone for that, and I all of a sudden I'm building my team, which is great, and it's great to have an advisor. That, and I've actually worked. I have an advisor I worked with for ten years, and he's always like, I'm like, okay, Tom, I need da 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 da, and he's like, cool, call this person, this person, this person, and I'm like doing all the legwork, right? If you find yourself in a place where you're like, okay, this is starting to be a lot. I need to build a lot of members for my team and, and it can get very costly and it can be very time consuming because then you're doing, like Bob was saying, you're doing all the legwork of figuring out who those people are and who to trust and all that. And so a lot of times what happens is we have someone that starts working with someone like Bob and then Bob says, you know what you need is you need the accelerator. Because the accelerator, the team is built, you're there. And then you have Bob with you. I mean, talk about pushing you. That's what we do because it's called breakthrough accelerator, right? Like we are breaking you through what's in your way of success. And if you need that team, that's what we have. We have people like I'm a marketing expert. I've been doing this for 20 years. So I'm the marketing person. Then you've got Bob, you've got your advisor, you've got your financial people and through the accelerator. And if you want to know kind of how it works, talk to Paula. Because like, I'll talk to my mentors and like, they'll still like, she graduated two months ago and the mentors will call and say, oh, I just called Paula today. And I'm like, yeah, you did. Because this team is your team for life. And like, I send out messages. I just sent one the other day to our little group. I'm like, hey guys, just checking in, schedule a call with me. Like it doesn't cost anything. You've already invested. What I'm doing is I'm making sure that my team of businesses that I'm building through this accelerator maintain and continue to accelerate their success. That's what we're all about. And so if it's really something where you're like, I don't just need one person. I really need to build a team. I'm ready to like take this to the next level. This might be a very good fit for you. And then of course, Bob would be right there with you the whole time. And then afterwards you can continue working 
with those mentors and you can hire them. Like I've had tons of our students that actually hired me to do their marketing or to teach them, you know, I've, I've done, and we do special, you know, rates and things like that. Um, so I would say, you know, maybe if you want to schedule a call with me um, and we can chat with Bob as well and talk about, you know, is this a good fit for your business? Because I love that you were speaking into the uniqueness of like noticing what's in the gap and then speaking into how you're offering that, like, the, I, I will throw gasoline on that fire. Like, let's go. Like, I want to, I want, I want my hands on that. I know we can do that. We can build that success for you. Thank yeah. you Absolutely. both so much for the clarity. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for coming today. It was so nice to get to know you on the business level. I'm like, I want to know what you do. You better share your link to your website. I want to know more. Call me. Call me, me. Let's talk. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Any other questions? We'll say thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, thank you so much. Big hugs from yeah. me. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your support. Thank you for your interest. And um, I'll see you soon. Yeah, we'll see you soon. All Bye, right. guys. Have Take a great care, rest of your day. Great weekend. See you soon. Bye, Bye. guys. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Allison. Happy Mother's Day.